Welcome back. Now we'll be discussing Automated Market Maker or short AMMs. These are the most popular form of decentralized exchanges on DeFi and they've really helped DeFi to grow significantly in size due to their ideal design for the low throughput blockchains as well as for the higher throughput blockchains. In order to understand what an AMM is and what it does, they, we would like to introduce basically the concept of a liquidity pool. So the idea is really to let a smart contract do the so-called market making. So market making or MM here, this is the process of serving the markets. Maybe you remember from the last lecture in the order book model, you have the, these, these different orders on the bid and the ask side, and they have to somehow match right in the middle. There must be a, a match. So the more orders there are in the market, right? So, and, and the bigger or the deeper the liquidity is in this market, the better for the overall efficiency, financial efficiency of this market. Now, um, instead of having actors, external actors putting in orders like manually, why don't we have a smart contract that does everything? And this is exactly what's, um, what's the basis of, a, of an AMM. So you have here the rich and wealthy actor Alice, uh, she's adding liquidity X and Y into this smart contract pool. Um, and then you have um, Bob, the nifty trader. He wants to exchange X for Y. And because he likes this very service that he's using, he's also paying a fee to Alice uh, to make uh, Alice happy. And, and Alice earns an interest on, on her assets in that regard. So that's the very basic idea. Now, how can we perform such a market making or such a liquidity provision uh, through a mathematical formula that we can program into a smart contract? Well, the most common way of doing this is the so-called constant product formula, uh, which is here the following. So we have an asset X uh, so uh, and a certain quantity of this asset and we have an asset Y and a certain quantity of this very asset. So the product of these two assets uh, must remain constant uh, according to a constant as long as there is no additional qu um, quantity of asset X and Y that's added. If we do add uh, whether, I mean, either X or Y to this pool, to this liquidity pool, then obviously the constant will, will change. But as long as we simply trade, so we trade X for Y or asset Y for asset X, the constant K should remain constant. So the inherent properties of an AMM is that we have instant liquidity, uh, meaning we can exchange at any point in time. So we don't have to wait until there's another order coming in, as you may remember from the limit order book, where uh, we might need a, another order from another entity in order to uh, fulfill our request of, a, of an exchange. Um, so we have instant liquidity irrespective of the trade size. However, with the disadvantage that there's a certain slippage, meaning there's a price change while we're executing the trade. And we'll be looking at the bonding curve in, in the next slide. So naturally and intuitively, um, so if you purchase an asset X, this will increase the price of this uh, asset X as well. And because there are two assets in this very market and K is constant, the price of the asset Y has to decrease. What's very intuitive and, and simple here is that the ratio of the quantity of asset X and Y uh, define the price in this very market. So you remember the architecture of an exchange. We have a, um, a price finding mechanism, right? That this is the very price finding mechanism while also doing market making, while also doing trade matching. So everything is really condensed in this very simple formula. Some people um, you might be aware of refer to this as a constant product AMM. And there are also more sophisticated formulas uh, where you can have multiple assets, more than two assets in the market. Uh, you can have different uh, parameters to, to kind of configure the automated market maker curve. So I've been speaking about this curve or this bonding curve uh, for a while now. And let's look into it, how this actually works. Now here, uh, on the x-axis, we have a we have an amount of x assets in the pool, right? So on this this part of the chart, and on the y-axis, we have an amount y 
of asset Y in the pool. The current state, so this is the um, AMM state, right? That we that we're having before a trade execution is that we have a quantity of 10 of the asset X, a quantity of 30 of the asset Y. So 10 times 30 is 300. So the constant in this very state is 300. Now, what do you think will happen if we um, want to remove here, if the trader wants to get minus 10, 10, 10 assets. So he wants to, the trader wants to retrieve 10 coins from the market, right? Um, how many asset need, does he need to provide here to the market in order to satisfy the constant product formula? So we have a constant 300. We, have, we know that we want to remove 10 assets out of the pool. So we'll be ending up at 20 here. How many do we have to add? So how many coins do we need to provide to the pool in order to get in return 10 coins of Y. So I'll let you ponder about it. You can pause the, the video and, and, and think about it for a while and then we can uh, continue together on it. So the answer here is five. So here, if you, if you want to get minus 10 out of the pool, you have to add plus five here uh, in the, on, the, on the X asset uh, into to the asset of the pool, such that the state after the execution of the of the trade, right? After the trade, we have a state of 15, 20, and we still have the same constant. So this is how a bonding curve functions, and this is how you can create, um, how you can basically specify how many funds you would like to purchase or sell given a certain state of the market. Very good. So now we have seen that the, the 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 price is actually changing while you move on this bonding curve, right? So the initial price here at the very top is different from here, is different from here, etc. So the price basically only gets worse uh, the bigger your the liquidity of your trade is, and obviously this is a continuous spectrum, so it's not discrete I, as I just explained, but it's 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 a rather continuous spectrum at which you get every coin. Uh, of Y that you get is has a slightly different price uh, of a coin X as long as you move along this curve and the expected slippage is a, is basically defined as the increase or decrease in price based on a trading volume and available liquidity so the more liquidity this pool has so the more money is this pool actually uh, holds and the smaller the trade is that you want to execute on this pool uh, the smaller the expected slippage uh, is, uh, becomes. So, and this is called expected because that's something that you can calculate, right? You can, you can uh, based on the pool state, as we just have done in the in the previous slide. Based on the pool state, you can estimate how um, how much slippage you you will get, right? You can estimate, uh, you can basically calculate the the decrease in price. So contrary to the expected slippage, we also have an unexpected slippage. And this mostly involves uh, other transactions. So if your transaction is TC, if there's another transaction TD that executes before your transaction, then uh, you might have thought that you would execute on this very point in the curve, but your real execution happens only at the second point because there's a, uh, another transaction that that was executed before yours. And this could mean that you, you will receive a much worse price than you anticipated. So in this particular example, you get a worse execution price. On the other hand, you can be lucky. So you can have a, an unexpected slippage that will provide you a better execution price. So if, for example, just uh, you were thinking to execute here, but in the end there was a another transaction before you and you start executing here, you might actually get a better price. So this really depends on the asynchronous nature of the, of the blockchain networks that, you are, that you're operating on. So you can't really tell whether you will be exactly executing at a given blockchain, blockchain state. So certainly this results in quite some interesting attack vectors that we will be speaking in the security lecture further. 
So what about slippage protection? So how can you protect yourself? I mean, you don't want to be pushed along this curve indefinitely by, by a third adversary, right? So you want to protect yourself to some degree. And that's where the slippage protection comes into play. So it's a, basically a threshold that you can specify. For example, on the Uniswap UI or SushiSwap UI, you can specify, I'm willing to pay um, at most 1% slippage. And then you know that in the worst case, you, the, the price that you get is 1% worse than what you thought you would get. So and this, is, this is certainly very helpful to, to set an ac unacceptable slippage rate. And if in this very case, somebody will execute in front of you, right, which might, might uh, happen here in this particular image, then your transaction will hit here the slippage limit and then it will basically not execute, so it will fail. You'll still be liable to pay transaction fees to the miners to try to execute this, this transaction of yours. However, you will not lose any uh, additional funds due to uh, an excessive slippage um, that, that you were not ready to, to basically pay uh, here in this particular case. Good. So what are the good, bad, and evil things of AMMs? Let's, let's look at the, at the list. So the great thing is there's no order book maintenance, right? So we don't have to add new orders, cancel orders. Every trade that's happening is actually uh, a trade because people would like to uh, perform a particular trade or it's a trade um, that's necessary because there's another exchange that has a higher or lower price and then there's arbitrage between those two states. Now, another advantage is um, that it is relatively simple to implement uh, constant product AMMs. So the execution of a single trade is quite, uh, is relatively low. So the gas costs are, are rather small. The danger of an AMM is the, uh, is the danger of an impermanent loss that we'll be discussing later. Uh, so there might be actually the possibility of a total loss of funds, which is possible if, uh, for example, one of the two coins grows significantly in value in relationship to the other. Um, and the so-called coin DPEG is relevant for stable coins. So if you have coins that trade one-to-one -one, and then suddenly one of them DPEGs, um, then arbitrageurs will take out the healthy coin and you as a liquidity provider, you'll be left uh, with, a, with a worthless coin. So I might want to add, so this here, this only affects uh, liquidity provider. So Alice in our example, who is actually providing liquidity, this does not um, affect immediately here liquidity takers, such as Bob, who is just a trader in, a, in an AMM. So this is not something that you need to worry as long as you're not providing liquidity to, a, to an AMM. So another disadvantage of AMMs is the high slippage for low liquidity markets. I believe in general it's quite hard to, um, to not have high slippage for low liquidity markets. They're, they're always quite challenging to, uh, to maneuver. Um, but always, if you, if, you, if you trade on these exchanges, please do observe your slippage tolerance, right? Set, set your percentage to whatever, 0.1% or whatever you're comfortable with and cal calculate your, your, um, your, your expected loss. Okay, users are vulnerable as well to sandwich attacks. That's certainly um, an issue. Um, we will discuss this more in the security lecture. The, the underlying idea is if, if you do have a trade here that uh, uh, goes along this bonding curve, you have an adversarial trade, uh, TA1 and TA2, that will try to squeeze you. So this is you, the victim, TV. So you kind of have like a, a sandwich here that will squeeze you <laughs> into, into uh, extracting all the slippage that you've got. So thank you for listening. I hope you liked this uh, lecture on AMMs. These are certainly very exciting uh, products on DeFi. Go ahead, try them yourselves uh, on chain uh, with small amounts first. Try to play with the slippage and see what it means. See what you get out of it. See what you don't get out of it and uh, remain curious.